Hello, I'm David Kerr and you're watching Shalom World News. Here are your latest news headlines from around the globe. Pope Francis says he is pained by Turkey's plan to convert the former Christian cathedral of Hagia Sophia in Istanbul back into a mosque. The Pope made his comments during his midday Angelus address on Sunday. The Byzantine Basilica was built in the 6th century during the reign of the Emperor Justinian. In the 15th century, the invading Ottomans then turned it into a mosque. Then finally, in 1934, under a secularist Turkish government, the mosque was turned into a museum. And so it has remained until last week, when a Turkish court ruled that the historic building can be turned back into a mosque. The first Muslim Friday prayers are scheduled to take place on the 24th of July. Two Catholic churches have been set ablaze in the United States in recent days. On Saturday morning, the 250-year-old Mission San Gabriel Arcangel in California was destroyed by fire. The church was founded in the 1770s by the Spanish Franciscan missionary St. Junipero Serra. His statues have recently been toppled by anti-racism protesters in the cities of Los Angeles, San Francisco and Sacramento. St. Junipero's critics accuse him of having oppressed Native Americans. That's a charge that his defenders strenuously deny. The cause of the fire at the Mission Church, though, is not yet known, and investigations continue. Meanwhile, in Florida, a 24-year-old man was arrested following a fire at a Catholic church in the city of Ocala on Saturday morning. Stephen Anthony Shields was charged with attempted murder, arson, burglary, and evading arrest following the blaze at Queen of Peace Parish. According to local sheriffs, Mr Shields poured gasoline in the church's foyer and ignited it after crashing his minivan through the parish's front door. Parishioners were inside at the time, although thankfully nobody was harmed. Mr Shields then drove away in the minivan, leading officers on a short chase before he was stopped and apprehended. According to local media, Mr Shields told police that he has been diagnosed with schizophrenia but is not currently taking his prescribed medication. Elsewhere in the United States, vandals set fire to a statue of the Blessed Virgin Mary outside a church in Boston. Police are treating the incident, which took place on Saturday at St Peter's Parish in Dorchester, as arson. The culprit, or culprits, set fire to plastic flowers which were in the hands of Our Lady, causing the face and upper body of the statue to be burned. The parish erected the statue 75 years ago to welcome returning soldiers home from the Second World War and to remember those killed in battle. Nobody as yet has been arrested in connection with the incident. Meanwhile, another statue of Our Lady was vandalised in New York on Friday morning. Security footage from the Cathedral Prep School and Seminary in the Borough of Queens captured an individual approaching the 100-year-old statue shortly after 3am and daubing the word idol down its length. The Cathedral Rector has described the incident as, quote, an act of hatred. Again, nobody has yet been arrested in connection with that incident. Well, after months of debate, we now know that the rebuilt Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris will look exactly the same as it did before it was gutted by fire last year. The decision was announced in recent days by the French President Emmanuel Macron. Following last April's fire, he had raised the possibility of rebuilding the cathedral spire in a more avant-garde architectural style. Now, though, the president has confirmed that the church, including the spire, will be restored to its last known visual state. The French government say they hope the restoration will be completed by 2024, with the church reopening for Holy Mass in time for the Olympic Games being held in Paris that year. Pope Francis has appointed Cardinal Luis Antonio Tagli to the Pontifical Council for Interreligious Dialogue. Cardinal Tagli, who hails from the Philippines, is currently the Prefect for the Vatican's Congregation for the Evangelization of Peoples. The Pontifical Council for Interreligious Dialogue is responsible for promoting good relations between the Catholic Church and non-Christian religions in accordance with the spirit of the Second Vatican Council's declaration on such matters, Nostra Aetate. The Pope has also appointed several other new members of the Pontifical Council, including five other cardinals. It's been confirmed that the Vatican Secretary of State, Cardinal Pietro Parolin, will offer Holy Mass at the Sanctuary of Our Lady of Lourdes in France on August the 15th. That's the Feast of the Assumption of Our Lady into Heaven. With COVID-19 restrictions still in place across France, there'll be no lay faithful present at the Feast Day Mass. It's hoped, however, that many people worldwide will prayerfully participate in the Sacred Liturgy via online streaming. The invitation to Cardinal Parolin to visit Lourdes upon the Feast of the Assumption was issued prior to the outbreak of the COVID-19 pandemic. However, 
It's hoped that his visit will prove to be a sign of support for the shrine, which has been closed to pilgrims for much of the year due to those COVID-19 restrictions. The shrine is erected upon the spot where the Blessed Virgin Mary appeared to a young local girl, St Bernadette Subaru, on a series of occasions in the year 1858. Finally, Pope Francis has recognised a miracle attributed to the intercession of an Italian laywoman who died in 1953 following a life of great hardship, including 60 years of confinement to her bed. That papal seal of approval now paves the way for Venerable Maria Antonio Sama to be declared blessed by the Church. The miracle attributed to her heavenly intercession involves the healing of a woman from severe osteoarthritis. The Pope has also approved four other candidates for sainthood as having lived lives of heroic virtue, thus paving the way for them to be declared venerable. That's another step, potentially, on the road to canonisation. They are Servant of God, Eusebio Kino, a 17th century Italian Jesuit missionary and cartographer. Servant of God, Angelino Bonetta, a 14-year-old Italian boy who died of bone cancer in 1963. Servant of God, Mariano Jose di Imbargu Guatia, a 19th century Basque priest who co-founded the Institute of the Servants of Jesus, and finally, Servant of God Maria Felix Torres, the Spanish founder of the Company of the Saviour, who died in 2001. Well, that's all for now. Do join me next time for some more news from around the globe. Until then, may God bless you. Shalom.